How do I use robots for Into the Deep? So this is the robots robot to play Into the Deep. The robots Into the Deep robot was designed specifically to make it accessible and easy for teams just getting into first tech challenge to build a robot to play Into the Deep. This year's robot is designed to acquire game pieces from an isolated location, place them in multiple different scoring locations, place a clipped feature onto the submersible, and ascend in the endgame. This year's chassis features a very simple drive mechanic where you've got two motors in the back with one driving each side. So in this particular case, we have our motor here in the back, which drives this gear, driving the wheel. And then from this back wheel, there's a belt that goes all the way up to the front, making sure all four wheels are powered. This is a really simple and easy to build drivetrain, which will be sure to get you up and moving as quickly as possible. On the front of the chassis, we've included Omni wheels. One of the reasons that this is really helpful is it allows the robot to turn smoothly and effectively. Above the chassis, we have the tower structure. This is the majority of the robot's structure and gives it its distinct, tall, laid-back shape. The tower includes an arm assembly, which also has the ability to extend. There is a motor with a 40-tooth gear driving a 60-tooth gear. Usually, we'll use something like a gear drive on an arm to make sure we get more torque and make the arm more controllable. So this motor will drive this gear, and then this gear is attached to this axle. When this gear turns, the whole axle will move causing the arm to pivot. On top of our arm is a really interesting extension mechanic. So this mechanism is called a four bar linkage. A four bar linkage is a mechanism which uses four components that are of a proportionate length that allows the output to stay the same orientation the entire way through its travel. As this linkage extends, the end effector stays in the same orientation the entire time. This is useful because it allows us to get quite a bit more reach than if we were using the robot without an extension. Having that extension on our arm allows us to not only use it to reach into our submersible to acquire game pieces, but also allows us to reach up into our other potentially high scoring locations. Similarly to our arm joint, on our extension we're using a gear drive. What this does is it allows this servo to get more torque and be able to lift heavier loads. So whether you're using the end effector on this current robot or you design your own, you should have enough torque to be able to move it around the field. At the end of our extension is our claw. The claw on this year's robot is very versatile, allowing you to acquire game pieces in a number of different orientations, as well as being able to quickly release and place game pieces in a precise manner. Our claw end effector is another smart servo driving a gear. And when this gear turns, the gears attached to the claw open and close at the same time. This makes it really simple and really easy to acquire game pieces. As you might notice, on the end of our claw, we've put on some rubber bands. Having a little bit of grip on your robot will definitely help your ability to hold onto the game piece. Underneath the arm, you'll see we have a post. This is used to help our robot ascend in the end game. You'll find that sometimes the simplest solutions are often the most effective. Lastly, on this robot, we have side panels. These side panels are great for mounting components as well as providing a great way of protecting your robot from intruding other robots. Overall, when building this robot, we wanted to make sure it was easy enough to build and allowed teams to complete about 60 to 70% of the game tasks. While this robot isn't able to do all the game tasks, you'll find that it gives you a great starting point to be able to develop your own solutions. Some of the things that this robot is capable of doing is acquiring from the floor, acquiring from inside the submersible, being able to score in the lower and the upper basket, being able to clip onto both the lower and the upper poles, and ascend to the second level in Endgame. One of the great things about the Robots Into the Deep robot is it's customizable. For example, you may find you want to switch up the order of the wheels to make your robot turn differently. You can change the speed of the robot by either changing the motors or the gears. Additionally, you may find you want more torque or a faster arm. Both of these things are configurable by either changing the motor that drives the arm or adjusting the gears. This is another Robots Into the Deep robot with a few upgrades. One thing we've done with this robot is we've upgraded its drivetrain. You'll see that it uses mechano wheels to get around the field. Over the years, we've noticed that mechano wheels are incredibly popular and useful in an FTC environment, providing the ability to move forward, backward, turn left and right, and strafe. These are our 4-inch BB Mechanum wheels. 
They have ball bearings in all the rollers, which allow for an incredibly smooth roll. Other things we've upgraded on this robot is we added an additional motor to drive the arm. We found that when trying to ascend in the end game, having more mass in the drivetrain required more motors to be able to pull up off the ground. Lastly, on this robot, we've decided to try out another gripper concept. So this is a roller gripper, and it uses the compliant wheels found in your kit to intake and outtake the game piece. One of the things we noticed early on when working on the Into the Deep robot was the challenge that's going to be posed by acquiring game pieces from inside the submersible. Given their random nature and their location and or color, teams may find that acquisition of game pieces is a little bit more difficult than some years. This difficulty led us to want to consider ways of making acquiring game pieces a little easier. We found that a roller system is often easier to align with a game piece than a gripper system, while a gripper system usually has a more precise placement and can potentially acquire the game piece in more orientations. One thing that's interesting to note, this claw is built from all the components available in your robot's core kit. When upgrading this robot, we had to make some design decisions on how we wanted the robot to play the game. For example, by increasing to a four inch mechanum wheel, it raises the height of the robot off the ground, which required us to change slightly how some of the mounting was so that it fit inside the 18 inch starting cube. Another thing we had to consider was the roller claw. With the roller claw, it made it really easy to acquire game pieces off the floor, but did require us to no longer be able to score in the upper location, nor does it allow acquiring the clips from the wall. Teams will have to weigh their design decisions while making their robot. One key takeaway about this year's Robits robots is it's important to iterate, going from design to design and figuring out what you like out of one and which you prefer from others. Teams, be sure to read the manual so you can make wise, informed decisions and have a great season. And that's how we play Into the Deep with Robits. Thank you.